I'm saying a whole lot, but let's, you know, I just want to get down to the practical day-to-day -day end user, guys like you and me, <laughs> you and me, me, you know, just regular guys that have, they have a, they have a, their own microcomputer, maybe at work, maybe at home, and they, they think they want to use Linux, and they think they want to get away from Windows, and they think they want to, um, have that freedom. There's a lot of things that are being said in the open source community that, community that just does not apply to people like you and I, the regular down-to-earth people. Um, <laughs> you know, people that don't know how to program, people that aren't skilled computer users, um, uh, tremendously skilled. I, I, I'm, my, there's some things that I do that people may think I look like I'm skilled, but I am hardly skilled. You know, until I learn how to program, until I learn all the different programming languages that are running in this computer, um, and to be able to to change my programs the way Stallman talks about, I am not skilled. And that's what I'm talking about. And um, so the people that they just don't think it's right that, you know, we've got people that are wealthier than any man should, should ever be, no matter what suffering or hardship they ever go through, <laughs> or how, much, how, how hard they work. You know, that includes Bill Gates. Um, so that's why they want why they want to use Linux because the or they want to see competition. They want to see a better business. You know, there's also always there's going to be an altruistic reason to use Windows. It, it's not two hundred four hundred bucks every three or four years isn't going to break you. Um, most people, at least in America, I'm talking about America. But um, so they you know they want to give this a shot and maybe they. You know, they've heard people talking about how great it is, but, you know, at the end of the day, unless the, the, the users that are in this class that I'm talking, class of people that I'm talking about, do something to take their stand, um, to take their place at the table of the open source, um, <laughs> at the open source table, it's, it's, a, it's not going to happen for them. And a lot of people that are in my class are just people that, okay, I'll give Linux a shot, but I won't pay for it, right? And then it doesn't work right for them, so they go away, and they go away frustrated. And meanwhile, they've heard all these promises, and they, they wonder why they think everybody that uses Linux is just nuts. I'm trying to do it from a third standpoint. Um, <clears throat> Eric Raymond wants all the... The, X, the Eric Raymond wants Unix professionals to have a job. That's what pro, that's probably his main motive. I mean, he's altruistic in that way. I would say Richard Stallman simply just wants source code to be available to everybody. It's like me saying I want everybody to have a toilet made out of solid gold, but you know who who wants to take a crap on it? I mean, you know, I, I, I don't mean to call. You know, that's a little convoluted, but I hope I made my point. And my point is, is that <clears throat> he's trying to get for a lot of people things that they don't want or need, basically, or have the skills to use. It's kind of like it's kind of like me starting the free calculus foundation so everybody can get a, a calculus book on their desk. But it doesn't mean, you know, are are the masses really going to read or use that calculus book? No, they're not going to. So that that's the mis now. My point of view, my angle is what I want to do is I want regular people to be able to have a choice in what operating system they use. I want Linux to be that choice. And I'm going to say it's um, for us to have that choice, it's not going to be free. But we can, we can buy a choice. And it's not just by using the software and then complaining about it, <laughs> and I'm guilty of that. It is, um, and if you're not a programmer, the only, right now, see, the, the way that the open source model is, is that if you can't program, you can't contribute. That That's really limiting. That really limits what can be done. You know, so... 
there are some people that work on Linux that get paid to, to work on it day in and day out. But there are some people that, that, that don't. And there's a significant enough amount of people that don't that if they were paid for it to do it more often, they can make a better product out of it. So how do we overcome what the distributions are doing? There's got to be a distribution out there that created, that comes from the angle of the desktop user without a hidden agenda to get you to buy their services. And that's what that's what it is. Red Hat's hidden agenda. They're, Red Hat is happy to embrace all the limitations that the Free Software Foundation talks about. Don't put the proprietary drivers in or sources and open. You're going to play to, to that absolutely unrealistic tune to most people because at the end of the day, they know that people are going to need them to go down there and pay by the hour to get it up and running. It's a it's a good racket, okay. Some distributions um, have done a pretty good job of getting you know, their stuff together, but let's talk about the end user. But there isn't going to be, the way it is right now, there is not going to be any group that's going to, at least the way I see it, yeah, there's, there's really no plans. Shuttleworth talks the talk, but at the end of the day, he can't believe what he's saying because with a, with a, with a, with a release deadline of every once every six months, I'm sorry. I'm just you know, if you think about that, if he's if he's promising to support a distribution release for three years with software security updates and patches and applications available, three years times two, that's six distributions that <laughs> the patches are going to be released for. That's hard to do. That's costly. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, what's my point? My point is, is, and the point won't play out. There, there's a reason why. There's a reason why when you go down to the restaurant. There's a reason why we don't. There's a reason why there are prices, and it's not, uh, yes, it's true, everything can be negotiated, everything's negotiable, supposedly, but it, there's a reason why when you go down to the fast food restaurant or the store, that if there is a, a product on the shelf that has a price on it, unless you have a coupon, you're going to pay that price. There's nothing you do on your own behalf that will cause the price to change. They will tell you this costs that, and if you try to negotiate them, negotiate with them, and if you think you've won the negotiation, you pay half price for a bottle of soda and walk out with it. They'll call you a thief. That's just the way it is. And the reason why it's that way, the reason why not everybody just pay what you can. It's not you know it's not always that way. Is because not everybody's going to give enough. It's called the free rider effect. Okay, and Linux is suffering from that. If I if we were to go out, even if all the, even if every single project out there that does something for Linux, and there are thousands of them, had were able to raise contributions, not one of them would would raise enough contributions. I predict to be able to support the developers to come up with a, a quality product that would match Windows. Yeah, you know, there's probably some people grunting in the background when they see me say quality product and and use the word Windows. Well, you're deceived, and the reason why you're deceived is that you no, know, it's not a quality product when uh, your machine can get rooted in less than 20 minutes when uh, you put your a new XP install on the internet. That that's true, but the other t but on the other hand, most security experts as a matter of fact say that there's a certain number of bugs in every thousand or ten thousand lines of code <clears throat> and even if you gave the most you know um, generous estimate to Linux as to how bug free it may be at the end of the day even Linux 
could be a Swiss cheese <laughs> on the net and get rooted just as quickly. I, I'm convinced of that now. It's just they're not going after it because the, 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 the target is too small. Uh, viruses and malware run on a system to perpetuate itself, and it's a statistical numbers game that they play. That's, that's, that's the way it is. So, and when I'm talking about qualities is things working without fucking around with it. If you don't believe that things just just work, if you think things just work, you're, you're either delusional, or if you think that I'm just, I'm the only competent person on the planet, you're delusional. Um, and that's not an admission that I'm incompetent. Um, basically, I, I guess I'm incompetent when it comes to Java, but I shouldn't be incompetent when it comes to Java. That, that should just work, and the whole system is too complicated. It's physically and time demanding wise too difficult to get things to work right. It's that simple. Um, <clears throat> and so it's not, so if we, we the, the, the desktop end users want to end up having our own desktop distributions, distribution, the only way we could possibly do it, and I still think it'll fail, is to, is to start pulling our money together through contributions and put it together They'll have a distribution that has a set of principles that I'll outline next. <laughs>